está. Haga, mira. Let's see. Let's see. We're waiting for Gaspar. Connecting. Eh. ¡Gaspar! Hola. Hola. Ah, ¿Todo ah, bien? ¿Todo bien? ¿Hablas español? Un poquito. ¡Wow! ¡Qué increíble! Pero un poquito. ¡Qué impresionante! ¡Qué bien! <laughs> ¡Wow! Uh, ¿Cómo aprendiste español? How do you learn Spanish? Uh, got too many friends from Spain and Perú hey, hey, y Puerto Rico. Ahí está, ahí está. Wow, wow. That's right. You, you're, you're good friends with uh, Luis, and, mm -hmm. um, Edgar, Arturo. And, Arturo, uh, yeah. Yeah, Arturito. We wanna, we wanna try. I wanna try to bring him. I don't even know how to call the show. I mean, I don't know. Like basically, like coffee with Hugo. I mean, I will probably. Yeah, that's 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 a good that's a good name for it. I think. Okay, you know that's what? A... How about this? Yeah. In honor of Gaspar, and we just we just baptize the show that is gonna keep going interviewing <laughs> people with coffee with Hugo, and the one that baptized it was Gaspar Pro. <laughs> cool. Thanks. No, no, hey, no. Yuha. I saw Yuha just connected. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a couple of people that actually, um, Allison, Allison, I, there's Allison just connected also. Allison is the world record holder for Masters. Yeah. Oh, nice. I think that is uh, f f over 45 years old. Uh, she lives in Oregon. Oh. Uh, there is, ah, oh, nice. there is Ignacio, Ignacio Perez from Spain. Oh, nice. Travel uh, gun jumper, yes. Ignacio, Ignacio jumped at uh, 230 when he was younger. We, he's oh, he's sweet. 73 like me. You know, we were we are 30, we are 47 years old. So it's going to come. Ah, yeah, yes. yeah, you know, getting a little older here. I thought, oh, like, how are you? Nacho, that's Nacho from Spain. <laughs> cool. How Nacho? ¿Qué cuentas? Yeah, Ignacio is a great guy. Great, great, great guy. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'll hey, go up to meet him soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it, I don't want to. You, you are awesome. Thank you for uh, for uh, coming to the show, Coffee with Hugo. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I don't want to take too much time from you. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, uh, wanted to meet you. Uh, please tell us, tell us a little bit before we start. Uh, Tell us about you. First. Yeah, so uh, I'm Gaspar. I'm from Estonia originally. Um, I used to do high jump also myself. Not so good. Uh, but during my bachelor thesis and bachelor studies, I got more into high jump. And then uh, my coach was. Uh, one of the best high jump coaches in Estonia. He was 80, yeah, 79, 80 years old at that time. So trained a few, few years together with one of the best Estonian female high jumpers, Anna Lyushenko, who is uh, 168 tall. I don't know how much she's had in feet, um, but her PB is 196. Yes, but her PB is... 196 how much is that in feet no idea you know it so uh, that's quite good i think for in com when you put it in comparison to the body height uh, she should be in top uh, top 10 in the world maybe but you can ask that from stefan home he has a good tower hey tower tower i'm just showing um uh yeah then uh i got more into high jump there and um then I did an exchange. I wanted to learn a bit more, more about high jump. And then uh, in Cologne, in Germany, there was at that time the World High Jump Center with uh, Coach Wolfgang Ritzdorf. And so I wanted to go there. So I had an opportunity to do an exchange program with Erasmus. So I went over there during my master's um, for for the first year, and it was so cool. So I wanted to go back, so I, so I went back to Estonia and then went back to Cologne again after my master uh, to do my PhD. And then with that, I got to know a lot of high jumpers and uh, 
And during my first year, our first half year, actually doing my PhD in Germany, my coach was 84 and uh, unfortunately he died mm. um, just before the London Olympic Games in uh, May 2012. And then uh, that was basically a time point when uh, so I was always helping him in the training because I got always injured and stuff. So I was helping him with Anna quite a lot and uh, coached also some kids. Uh, so after my coach died, uh, he wrote in his, in his uh, last letter to Anna that he should, uh, she should ask me to coach her. So from that point, I started to coach mostly high jump straight. And yeah, then I went first competition with Anna was the European Championships. Uh, when I was just coaching on a, before I was in some competitions when I was in uh, in Germany then I helped her also when my coach wasn't there but uh, yeah that was the time point when I started really coaching well wow. and took over the old, my old group training group we had the high jumpers Anna some pole world girls some sprinters yeah that's where I started the coach and uh, yeah during my PhD then it got better or I was much, mostly coaching from distance. I still do. And then, yeah, could go with Anna to all kinds of competitions and got some medals. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very, very, that's awesome. That's part that, it. Um, yeah. When we, when we were in Germany, we saw, uh, there are so many great competitions, such a love for high jump. Uh, the atmosphere is awesome, by the way. Yeah, so that, that was yeah. pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Uh, so now you are in London. Uh, how is it? Yeah, so um, I did my PhD in Cologne, uh, in Germany. Mm, got to know to a lot of people. Ended up also joining Leverkusen Track Club. Got to know Hans-Jörg Thomas Kamp. Probably one of the best uh, coaches in, in Europe in high jump. Try to help help him with coaching sometimes in competitions. So, and then I finished my PhD, but I got a position here in uh, in London in a university as a research fellow. So I decided to leave Germany, and that was two years. No, it's three years ago now. Um, exactly in March this year. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm in London. I'm. You're working in the university now and as a research fellow, actually now senior research fellow lecturer in sports by M. Hanix. Wow. Yeah, when, when we were, um, we have a lot of friends in common, you know, and I, even before I got to meet you, uh, your, your name always kept popping up and, and uh, what everybody was saying was, Gaspar, super bright. You know, so it was, it was actually really, really, really positive. And I see that you have, a, a, you have done considerable, considerable amount of research, a, that which, you know what, it's, we are really excited because there are a lot of people, uh, there are questions from people, not only from the United States, but mm -hmm. there are questions from kids, uh, the national team members from Argentina, some from Peru, uh, some questions basically that uh, actually there is a gentleman that, uh, coaches here but he's originally originally from sweden uh, so there are mm. there, you know it's, it's going to be i think it's going to be great uh i think that now let's dig into it uh first question here says uh high jump is always evolving and coaches are trying to find more productive and efficient ways to jump and, and train in your opinion what are these new uh, what are these new tendencies of training yeah, I think uh, the new tendencies in training or in specifically in high jump, uh, most, co most coaches try to go for more speed, so more velocity in the, in the takeoff. Mm -hmm. And there's, I think the last year there's more and more work with the, with the run of velocity and to be able to take off from high velocities. And... So it's more towards speed flopping. And uh, that's also the case more in, in Germany right now. And when you see Mateo's pretty vertical jumping, then, then you can see that 
you can jump quite uh, from a really fast velocity and can jump really high. Uh, but this needs a lot of work, otherwise you're in inconsistent. Uh, and you can see that also in uh, in the um, in the so development in high jump with uh, new jumpers coming on. Most of them are are in in fact speed jumpers. You would determine them like that. So there's more work done in this uh, field, I think, because there's all kinds of exercises. Uh, they're still based on 70s, 80s when everybody uses still the same exercise. There's no real, uh, you don't need to invent a, new, a wheel because it's basically the same thing still. It's just you need to find a way how you teach that uh, specific athlete or kid uh, to jump high. Uh, so from run up or run up exercises. Um, I think there's no, no really new things, but there's more exercises for run up. You use more exercise for run up instead of uh, too many pl plyos or too much strength than it was used to do in, in uh, 20, 30 years ago. It's very interesting that you say that because uh, when I look at even my old uh, training uh, ways, it's, it's kind of like I am it's ama I'm amazed that I'm still walking. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can mention that. Yeah. <laughs> it was a different, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, you, I, 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 you know, that, that was pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, another question here says, uh, what percentages do you... Uh, like working in the weight room? Um, do they probably mean uh, percentages of um, intensities or weights? Yeah. Weight, yeah. Okay. Um, I like to go to the gym probably two times a week, two, three times a week, depending on the period. Um, I tend to do quite high uh, high percentages with my athletes at the start of the preparation period, lower ones, but then go go higher quite uh, quite fast and uh, work with uh, quite high loads with uh, low repetitions. Uh, so maximum go to six six repetitions quite quite early in the in the phase already and towards the to the competition period uh, it goes even more lower so I don't really do more in the gym exercises over over eight reps not really only in the first few maybe first few months of the first two why well, first first two months yeah. of the preparation period um, but I do a lot of also in the weight room because my research in biomechanics is more about uh, one part is also, also about uh, muscles and tendons and uh, how they adapt. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, throughout the year in exercises with high, also high percentages to help the tendon to adapt because tendon doesn't really adapt with um, low percentages, mm -hmm. almost not not at all when you when you train below seventy percent. So nothing's gonna happen with it in the tendon when you train at low intensities. At this, this case, so for that I have a uh, like separate uh, small blocks in front of uh, or be before um, before several trainings during the week where we do some isometrical exercises uh, like holds with approximately 90% of the uh, maximum or I do some um, um, uh, like lo longer time under tension exercises which uh, have shown to 
help also for the tendon to adapt because in high jump where in, when your tendons are not uh, ready for that then uh, the Achilles tendons and patellar tendons are the two main tendons what go and get uh, so to say inflammated but not really inflammated and then you can't really call it as an inflammation it's more like a um, disruption in the in the collagen fibers and then it can end up in in a rupture when you when you don't train accordingly you're right you're 100 percent right yes um thank you uh another question right here says what what is the difference between training men and training women for, for uh, high jump specifically it's not not really uh, it's always easier to train women because they're uh, you can write them a plan and you know that they're going to do everything and uh, <laughs> they don't really complain whereas uh, men always complain <laughs> somehow so that's why i think it's a bit easier to train with uh, girls and uh, with women uh, but not with everybody but uh, a lot it tends to be like that that is funny that is funny okay cool and um and this is just a question just to piggyback out of this one uh do you think that um as far as when the when is, is it true that women need probably uh, guys get up for before the competition guys get a lot more risk and women you can just go ahead and train them through uh, have you found any any difference in something like that or not really? Yeah, it tends to be like that. I think also that's, uh, there are also some studies showing that um, women need more, uh, they lose the, when you do strength training with them, then when you're in comparison to men, men you can leave a week off. It's even sometimes, in some cases, even better to, to leave them three, four days free and then uh, then jump or to a competition, but for women, this drops uh, quite fast. So the training uh, uh, stimulus from the strength training that drops really fast and easy. So for women, I would keep, you need to hold the uh, strength training longer in than for, for men. So I've seen that also for, with uh, some of my athletes, yeah. With men, you can leave easily three, four days even depending on athlete off before the competition. Uh, for some, you would need uh, one day before some uh, activation training in the, gym, in the gym. And for some, you don't need that. That's also awesome. general for women. Yeah, yeah. You need that. Huh. Yeah, you, you, you know what? It, it is interesting that you mentioned that. It's, it's kind of like the same thing that I found. I found, And it, it depends on people. Okay? Some people need to... Some yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, yeah, you're, yeah. you're 100% right. And actually, it, it, this is interesting because in regards to Daniela, uh, it, it, she, if she takes too much rest it, it, during the competition, the leg is just not there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but interesting. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Uh, it... it Another question right here says, uh, could you give an example of a typical week of training in pre-season and then also in competition week? Yeah, so um, pre-season, a typical week would be for me normally when you would train once a day. Uh, so right now I have one, basically one athlete uh, from Estonia, Krete uh, Odras, she's jumped 92, but she's now oh, 32 years old now already. So we train once once a day and then five to six times a week, uh, maybe five times a week. And with her, I would do, I'm normally doing um, Monday, Tuesday training, Wednesday training, Thursday off. Friday training, Saturday training, Sunday off. Uh, and it depends also how she has to work. And uh, But when it would be a younger athlete and they would not have to work, uh, then 
I would do Sundays always off and six days a week. Um, not always, but mostly Sunday off. Um, Monday would be normally a um, sprint or, uh, or a gym session. Um, Tuesday, normally jumping day. Wednesday, I tend to do um, more at the start of the preparation period, more longer runs, more um, tempo runs. I mostly don't go over 200 meters with uh, the jumpers. Uh, stay around 100, 150. Um, and all around core and uh, circuit exercises, uh, circuits for the whole body and includes also some playoffs and stuff. Um, Wednesday, I would do another sprint gym and then maybe Friday or Saturday, depending, uh, of the week I would do a high jump, but I don't have always the same. Sometimes I alternate at, in some weeks. I don't do any high jump than we do on those, those, uh, those days I would do, uh, uh, plyos, uh, circuit. I normally let them do a circuit with plyos, let's say three, four or five exercises, two, three rounds. So I do, let's say first exercise, something with hurdles, the next exercise with uh, one leg jumps and then boxes. So, and then again, the same round. Um, for sprinting or for sprinting, uh, I normally go also maximum to 60 even uh, with, uh, with more than uh, more than 90% percentage of uh, velocity and quite almost every day there's always a tempo runs inside uh, where you have to run approximately 75 to 80% mm. uh, with the emphasis of, um, of the posture and uh, the running mechanics. Um, this I would do also one day in the curve or indoors curve. Uh, you run into the curve, out of the curve, uh, down from the curve. And normally on Saturdays, uh, I'll have a hill session. And uh, yeah, my pre preparation season is our competition, pre competition is not really the same always. In, in one month I do more playoffs. Next month I do, I go more to uphill things. And then when it comes to closer to the uh, pre-competition, then I do also downhill again um, to get more into faster velocities. And then uh, in the season, then uh, it depends when the um, most important competition is. Um, so the first competitions, which are not so important, um, the athletes can also do over a, uh, when they're still a bit, uh, tired. Mm. So that then I don't leave them any, too many days off on, or I'm not doing any tapers. So for a big, big competition, and I tend to do a, a taper between seven to nine days. Um, where they have uh, high intensity with long rests, one day in, one day off training, and normally one day before the competition. I tend to do with both men, men or women, it doesn't matter, uh, or it depends on that, but mostly I do one day before a uh, gym session with quite high res um, uh, with quite high intensity or percentages but really, really uh, low reps. And I go mo mo do mostly only three, four, um, three, four um, repetitions and three, four uh, sets. And then do normally some uh, plyos on top of that and some uh, sprints, uh, mostly one-legged um, boundings from a box down or things like that. 
yeah, that will be that will be a shorter version for that. Yeah, but the preparation period season it always changes. Like every, I normally do three weeks in one day, one week um, easier. So three weeks uh, medium, and the third third one is the highest intensity or volume. And uh, I switch normally about let's say when the pre-season in European season it starts like when you start to train about after the season you have maybe one two weeks off in September you start mid-September start of October I do a switch normally around Christmas New Year's time into more faster stuff mm -hmm. mm, and start to do high jump specific or lane high jump normally around November time mm -hmm. uh, when they have no injuries or something. So pre stuff from last season. Uh, so it depends from it, but mainly it looks like that for me. Luis just joined. <laughs> Luis Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. Ahí está Luis. Está, está también Carlos Lavoy, que es el, he's a the high jumper from Argentina, 225. He was right there too. Hola Luis, ah, ¿cómo okay, estás? Cool. Bien, bien. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, that's awesome. Uh, eh, aquí estamos pasándola bien. Solo faltas tú, Luis. Ya, ya te vamos a traer al programa. Por si acaso, um, Gaspar ha bautizado el programa con un café con Hugo. Así que voy a, tratar, voy a tratar de traer un café de Puerto Rico y me tomaré un café de Puerto Rico en tu nombre haciéndote una entrevista a ti en algún momento. Saludos. Yeah, you need to do a next one with Luis also. Well, I'll, I'll call him. I'll call him. Well, that, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, in, in, let's see. Uh, how are we of time? I don't want to, I don't want to. Claro que sí. Tú eres el próximo. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I just want to make sure, that, uh, un café, uh, que bueno, mira, está la, that, uh, high jumper from Spain. My, 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 Nachin, Nachin is awesome. Okay. Um, plyo, okay, this, here's the question. Plyos and speed before or after weights? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I used to do a lot of, um, um, so I like doing stuff, uh, When you do weights, I like to do plyos and uh, runs just after it. But that's also with a small risk because when you come from the gym and then start to do a lot faster stuff, then there's a, still always an, a bit higher injury risk. So I know coaches who uh, don't do that at all. And then I think in the US, it's also not so uh, popular that you do. You also said, I think in US, you separate the weights and sprint sessions quite often. Like you do weights in the evening and sprints in the morning. Uh, that's uh, for the injury perspective, a uh, better way, yeah. I know also, I know quite good um, uh, Wim Vandermen, uh, the coach of uh, GL about and husband. Uh, he, he t I visited him a few years ago and then um, he told me also that he used to do also players and speed or runs after after gym but then when the athletes start to get injured then he switched that uh, so they do just in the evening um, uh, gym and then some not straightly after any runs or players rather than they do it before but I still like to do some players inside so I have normally I don't do high 90% runs anymore also after or 80 90 flying stuff after um after a gym session but i do some players always for um to get some uh, velocity and to uh let them feel a bit uh, more velocity again and yeah some box jump is not box jumps normally or down from box i don't really like uh jumps on box, I like more jumps down from box. Okay. Yeah, because I think that's more jumping related than uh, jumping on a high box and lifting your 
Do you hear me? I think I, I lost you. you. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. I can, okay. You, you froze, but I can hear you. Now I, you're back. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. That was the same thing. Yeah, so when I do something, then I do some standing jumps or um, or box jumps down from a box, some uh, players. Okay. And may, when I do, then I won't go with runs. I do always do also some uh, runs after a gym, but I don't go mostly over a... Uh, 75, 80%. So I try to keep there the running mechanics and not really too fast movements. Very understandable because, yeah. That, Just that, to try and hope with the hope that it's something from the gym can transfer to, um, to, uh, to the track. Right. It's not, not always working, but it's still a try. That's pretty cool. That's good stuff. To be honest with you, um, yeah, and I, 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 I would agree a hundred percent with you. Um, there is always a, there is always a risk. To, you just cannot go too fast after a, a weight session because there is, yeah, yeah. You, your body already has some trauma, and there is, it will be probably putting the jumper at risk. I hundred percent agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Thank you. I like also. I like also. Shot uh, throwing and stuff after after gym, okay. yeah. um, front or back or. That is pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. That's great. Uh, let's see. Um, in your opinion, how many contacts, you know, is ply or jumps, or would you do in preseason and in season when we're talking about jumps itself? Now that we're talking about plyos. Yeah, even though I'm a researcher and I like to count stuff. Um, I don't count that anymore. I used to count that in the first two years, but um, uh, too much stuff in the tra training change all the time. So I don't do even also a yearly plan really specifically anymore. I maybe think I have my main plan in head and uh, what I want to do, but I write down only maximum a week every Sunday. Uh, I know what I want to do but I don't count uh, exactly contacts anymore. Wow. It, it, no. it, it, it's interesting. It's interesting because uh, you have done this for so many years that there is a point where you have a feeling for the athlete. So you basically... Yeah, I'm just... too, uh, for, for that, I'm too young to have such a good feeling. But, um, That's awesome. But yeah, That's great. But, I, but I gave that up. Uh, that was a bit too much numbers and it's not really... It's not about, uh, it's more about quality than quantity at that time, uh, time point. Uh, so I'm not really counting that. I go there with a the feeling, even though I'm a scientist and do science, but that's a, a mixture of uh, art and uh, science. So that, that is interesting. I don't really count that, so yeah. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you because many things can change uh, from one day yeah. to the next one. So it's going, going in, in working with an athlete and maybe, who knows, maybe this athlete was studying uh, too much in the morning, they had an exam or they had something to do or some personal thing. And if, if they are not 100% just going by what a, a hard copy of the plan is, we probably could be playing injury, you know. So I 100% yeah. agree with you. It all depends on the session. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. uh, you want you want to add something? No, no, it's good. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh, why some jumpers lift uh, the day before the competition? Lift yeah, they get a post um, to feel yourself a bit lighter next day, and uh, you normally. It uh, gives you like, like an extra boost before uh, for the next day. Uh, and that's probably why. But you probably spoke also, you spoke to Javier. No, Javier used to do the same day, didn't he? Javier used to do sometimes early in the morning, yes. But yeah, I mean, early in the morning, the same day. Yes, yes. The Javier, Javier, Marino, I, I know them for a long time. Unfortunately, by the way, you happen to be the first interview. When we tried to do this with Javier, we mm -hmm. were trying this for three, four hours. 
And unfortunately, in Cuba, the internet is not like, like the one we have. So you need to go there next time yeah. when it's free again. So it didn't quite help us for the interview. So. Yeah, yeah. And Luis does it also at the same time sometimes, yeah. Oh, cool. In the, okay. mor- in the mornings, yeah. Oh, Luis also does. Okay, cool. No, no. It, it, I heard basically that, um, yes, I heard that basically it, they used to do the, the same day in the morning. Um, and it worked very well for them. I mean, interesting. In my case, I was more of a rest person, but everyone... everyone yeah, was... yes. Yeah, so I normally do it also the day before. Uh, but in some athletes, two days before and then rest and then competition. When but you need to try it out. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um Okay, this is, uh, what is your favorite food? <laughs> <laughs> I always said, cool. wait, um, I always said, Lobos is, sal- I always said Peruvian thing, soltado, uh, no? Lomo saltado. Lomo saltado. Oh, yeah. man, that's great. <laughs> Lomo saltado is very good. Next time, yeah, I... this uh, this 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 is the wrong thing, uh, might be correct here yeah, because when you do high weights, um, that can be true, yeah, okay, yes, cool. Yeah, cool. Some somebody wrote that as well, yeah, no, actually, he used to compete, uh, they he used to compete for Sweden, I think he was a Swedish athlete living in the United States. Uh, oh, yeah, he has a Swedish last name. Yeah. That's him. Yes, yes, yes. I, I see how um, what they are doing. Yeah, now. Arroz con Napicheras is also good. Arroz, Luis, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? Now that we're talking about Arroz con Habichuelas, <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about your friendship with Luis. I mean, uh, how that started. <laughs> yeah, Luis also came to, uh, came to Cologne when... Uh, just shortly after I started my PhD. So I was still jumping myself a bit then that time. And uh, yeah, that's, he was there every, t- every day in, this, in, the, in the uni training with the other guys. And that's why, how, we, how we got to, got to know each other. We didn't really speak at the, at the start so much, but then we went to a competition where I had to do a triple jump and I broke my leg. And then uh, in that, that competition, he was just, watching there. So then uh, we got to know to each other a lot. And then now I go, when there is no lockdown like now, then I go to Cologne quite often and I stay at Louis Place. And I've been to Puerto Rico also and uh, I've helped him sometimes with trainings when it's needed or yeah. That's We're awesome. really good friends at Louis, yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, no, I see, I see, I see it online basically. I saw you when you were in Puerto Rico. Looks like you guys had a way too much fun. So that's good. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, uh, somebody threw a, a last question in there. Uh, it, it said, actually, um, they said, uh, what are good tests for the jumpers? I mean, what, as far as testing, what are good, yeah. good tests? I mean, um, for jumpers, I'm, I'm using... Uh, Classical, uh, when you want to see, compare uh, in one athlete, then it's always nice to do uh, standing jumps and stuff also, but to compare if they get better in with faster, faster velocities, then I tend to do uh, in everyday training when I don't have any measurements devices with me, then I tend to do... Uh, standing triples and then uh, or standing uh, five steps mm-hmm. or then from with some uh, with some pre run up and then compare the difference between those mm-hmm. when uh, the difference is bigger it's better because then you can uh, jump uh, better with a higher velocity so but i do also when there are some technology available then i do a lot of drop jumps and try to get also the 
reactive strength index. I'll check that. Um, I do with my athletes also some uh, tendon testing stuff, but that's not really so easily available uh, to everybody. So I have that in, in my lab. And in Germany, the Olympic uh, Committee uses that for tendon analysis. Uh, mm. But I do always also flying, uh, flying 30s, mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, I check also the um, contact times in uh, not only in those testing, but also in diff different um, exercises in uh, like poundings, one leg poundings, normal poundings. And uh, hi, Mateusz. I see him there. Yes. <laughs> what? What? A, he's so fast. I mean, this guy is just so fast entering the water. Yeah, Mateus is one of the fastest currently in the in the in the world. I guess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was very impressed with him. Hi, Mateus. How are you? Great to have you. Someday, probably, we want to have you in the show. Uh, Gaspar just baptized the show was coffee with Hugo. So. <laughs> It's gonna it's gonna keep going, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that will be cool. Yeah, every week. Hey man, you baptize the show, so let's go ahead. This is coffee with Hugo. It's in honor to Gaspar. He was the first was the first <laughs> one in the show. Let's do it. Cheers. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Awesome, bro. Hey, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, there have been so many people asking for a. a more information, different points of view. Um, it's, very, it's very enriching to the high, high jump community to start getting a, the perspective of people that basically have, that have done so much for the sport and at the same time that they have their own perspective and their own results from a different, different uh, countries. Uh, I think that this is going to be great. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Yuha is also a good uh, person to call. Yuha was, I think, I don't know if he's still here. He's a good person to call also. He's done a lot with high jump. Yuha is a letter. Who From was? Finland. Really? Yuha is a letter. Yeah, he's, he's a really good guy. You can ask him also. I don't yeah. know if you know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. But well, he's done a lot. He's, uh, he's done great stuff in, uh, also testing with his athletes in Finland, and well, he's also an old, old biomechanics so, mechanics guy. So, really, and he jumped to thirty also. So, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, man, that would be great. I mean, like I said, we want to be doing this once once a week. There have been already yeah, a be good. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's awesome. By the way, uh, I was thinking of bringing back the the high jump festival. I used to do a high jump festival here. Back yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. The old days. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, I think that I want to bring it back. I want to bring it back. Uh, the High Jump Festival was a lot of fun. You know how sometimes with the sport, it, it definitely was not a money-making thing. Uh, uh, yeah, of was, course. It never is. You know, it was just something very cool that we did, uh, bringing the guys. And at the end of the competition, I remember we had a... a See, Luis is there's in. There's Luis. Look at Hey. Luis will be He's in. He's in. <laughs> Luis, let me go ahead and get your ticket right now. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, there was a point where we, we, I stopped doing that when I moved from Minnesota to Texas. Um, mm. That was basically the move. Is so in this is work, I started getting a little bit more overloaded. So I was, that was one of the things that I basically, that I stopped doing. But I'm going to bring it back. I think that this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, and we, I, when that happened, we'd love to have you have you here, man. You, you stay with us. You are part of our family now. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Gaspar. I, hey, man. Uh, again, anything else that you might want to add? No, you can always write me. I will. I can answer. I will yeah, yeah. For sure. Or when yeah. somebody has a question, then I can answer always. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you, okay? Hey, take care of yourself. And, uh, yeah, this... same. Say hi to Dani. I... Daniela's right here. She was listening to you. Come here. <laughs> yeah. 
Hi. Hey, Danny. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Doing good, yeah. Today in, in London, it's quite good. It's 24, no, 22 nice. degrees. It's nice and warm. Good. As we can, we can go out for one hour. So we're allowed to go out for one hour. So. That's and my, my son already. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, it's good. It's not so good as in Texas, probably, but uh, it's good enough. Well, we, we, are, we are at the house still. I mean, we, we really hardly get out. I mean, um, oh, la we have a pool. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a pool. Yeah, we, <laughs> yes, we, do. we need it. It's so hot. We need it. it, it yeah, no. It gets so hot in here. Today it was like hot. 35. Yeah. 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 Today it was, uh, yeah, sometimes you get 35, 40 degrees. Uh, so you, you need a pool. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I would melt. Yeah. Yeah, it gets very hot. And the winter is actually quite, quite uh, um, pleasant here in Texas. Yeah, I can, I can get it. Yeah. August. Yeah, August. Yeah, that, that's like in Sahara. The pool becomes yes. a hot tub. There's yeah. no swimming. Even the pool, if it gets too hot, it's like you're jumping on a little soup. Just so <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Oh, you know, it gets, yeah, it's just, that's August. That's Lake August. It's like, man, you just, even the pool gets, I mean, it's, it's better than not having a pool, but it gets a little hot even there. So, May and June, though. Yeah. May and June is good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should make a competition then there. Yeah. The festival is we a good thing. It should come over. You know what? Then I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll 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 put wheels into this, and we should go ahead and start. Uh, really, let's let's go that the, the river. The re bring it back. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember I, when I used to be in Minnesota. Then I used to. I was still in the school. I was maybe two years younger than Danny. Then I found your homepage, and then I found the stuff, and I watched that. I was like maybe I was like sixteen, so this this thing was really cool. Wait a minute, you were sixteen years old. When I was sixteen, then I then I saw your homepage at one point You're with so the Minnesota old. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that was that was a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Holy! I remember God. that. Holy cow! So that was man. a cool thing. Yeah! Wow! Man. Now I don't, I may not. Okay, I need to go running now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is so cool. That is so cool. Gaspar, that's awesome. Wow, look at that. Man, well, you know what? Let's put wheels into this. I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm excited. I think that is yeah, really yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, uh, COP19 let us, you know, go ahead and have something nice next year here. And uh, let's go ahead. I, I put wheels into this. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, next, next, next year, May, when everything is nice, we do a high jump festival in uh, Houston. In Texas. Houston. In Texas, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gaspar, thank you for everything. You have been very generous with your time uh, and your knowledge, by the way. Uh, yeah, no worries. You know, it just I, it was mind blowing, and you definitely, you definitely are one of the brightest minds out there. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks. No worries. Oh, we appreciate you, brother. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Good. See ya. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.